That might be a mistake. <laughs> All right, the gag's off. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Look at that American flag as the background. Yeah. Yeah, Tom's well, I figure since you guys were getting all patriotic, I'd, I'd show <laughs> mine. Yeah, talking about our misfortunes in the military. <laughs> <laughs> if you notice, I got, I got like a ruined uh, 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 courtroom in my background. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. That's about yeah. right. Yeah, <laughs> hey, everybody, this is Murder Hobo Inc. This is Between the Rolls, our uh, shot at taking a, uh, a talk show and trying to make something of that. And obviously, we're going to fail. We're like uh, the view, but better. <laughs> better looking topical oh my goodness <laughs> we're doing this tonight all right <laughs> but before i begin insulting everybody on the left the right and whatever shade of i'm gonna whatever 50 shades right, right there 50 shades would have been a good one to go through i was not yeah. in that direction though uh <laughs> Let's go ahead and go through the rigmarole. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. If you want to take a look at our YouTube archive, you can do that. If you want to join us on uh, here talking about stuff like Frank is for the first time tonight or joining in one of our one shots, not this week, but the following week after that, you can hit us up at murderhoboinc at gmail.com or hit us up on Twitter. If you want to buy some cool merchandise stuff, I was going to wear my awesome shirt that's soft, cozy, but I sleep in it <laughs> and I had an accident the other night. So... I can't show it off, but you can get cool merchandise like mm -hmm. that one. Oh yeah, by oh, yeah. going to the store. Uh, if we have a face for radio, as Frank, uh, uh, you know, we're getting a lot of shine tonight. Yeah, from yeah, a lot, a of, shine. lot of Speaking the of shine, we do have a shine system. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that later. Uh, but you can uh, hit the podcast up at uh, one of the links around there. Oh, come on. You only get that if you play in the game. You don't yeah. have to rub it in everyone's faces. That's right. I do. Oh, but that <laughs> reminds me. Pirate Dog Dice probably uh, uh, would also make you a set of dice just as fancy as that. If you're rolling like shit, Pirate Dog Dice will make you dog poop dice. They're fancy. It, they kind of do that same thing you do with an ostrich turd where you just kind of dumb it up until it's really shiny and then they turn it into a die. Rolls great. Smells terrible. <laughs> but you can find a way to get over that if you buy nice. Adventure Sense from our uh, uh, lovely sponsors over at Oddfish Games. Adventure Sense get everything except putrid sewers, and they also develop the Shine Project. Uh, if you're trying to write something, whether it's a campaign or a book, it's more geared towards books, but you can apply it to other ways. Uh, this is a great system to help get you guys writing and everything like that. Whew. If I did that in one breath, that would be impressive. That would. But I'm not that good. <laughs> I might actually, I might actually have to grab some putrid sewers when I finally get back to in-person gaming, uh, with to use with my dwarven forge. Yeah. My, my son says I produce putrid sewers on my own. I don't need a. Well, there you go. You're all set. <laughs> that's that's why you, every once in a while you look and you'll see him and he's sitting there like this and behind the camera he's punching me. I'm saying that's just pumping the that's just pumping it back up, son. You're just aiming. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Behind <laughs> the scenes of the Margu campaign. You know, I, I'm going back to that medieval feel. You know, you walk down every stone, there's night pots out in the streets. But why shouldn't we have the room smelling like that? Make you feel like you're there. <laughs> exactly. That's Adventure what my dad sense, said. everybody. <laughs> Future <laughs> sewer. <laughs> Adventure sense. All right. We got <laughs> the topic of the law tonight. Uh, but before we get into that, we'll talk about the last two games that we played one on saturday one on sunday we had to miss thursday due to some putrid sewers uh <laughs> working their way through frank's basement uh not this frank the other frank the uh dungeon master frank uh so the true putrid sewer frank true putrid. i mean just right out of his Pure. mouth it's so much crap uh <laughs> and you'll find that out all. because if you try and look for us on uh or look for him I think Twitter. I just committed suicide in my next game after this comment. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Well, before we go ahead and talk about the episodes, God damn it, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> We're not getting anything done tonight. No. But before we do that, let's go around the table, starting with the Frank who's here tonight. Frank, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Frank. I play uh, as much painful 
death dealing destruction in the game on Sunday with the rest of the tri generational group. Uh, I've been playing for about, oh, I don't know how old am I? 45, so 40 years. So yeah. that's, that's about all there is about me. <laughs> I have no life. Sure. I mean, you've been playing this game since you were three years old. Not since I was, since I was four or five. I, I'm about to turn. I, I, I turned 45 in May. So they are a little I'm bit I'm a millennial. More... I do new math. It doesn't work for me. So. <laughs> All right, David, you are up. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm David. <clears throat> I play on the other Thursday night show, the good show, Cacophony. Yeah. Uh, no, Ooh. I'm just kidding. I'm busting <laughs> Kyle's chops. He's he does a really good Thursday show, the Thursday <laughs> campaign. The My Cthulhu. Chops did are you did, did you ever decide on the name of that that thing? Uh, Fred. Rises I did or several it... times and Fred. It keeps changing. Okay, pretty sure it's okay. Fred now. Oh, it's Fred. Fred. Okay, Fred. Fred. Yeah. Cthulhu rises. Everybody Fred, dies. Man. There we go. That's my type uh, game. Kyle runs that game. I'm on the other game, wow. Cacophony. Uh, also, <laughs> I play on the Saturday campaign with Frank, uh, our DM, uh, the Calamity yeah. campaign. Uh, and then most of the time you can catch me here on Between the Rolls on Tuesdays. So, yeah, that's me. I get around. So, All right. And finally, our Dragonlance diverse uh, guest on the show tonight, we have... DJ. DJ, introduce yourself. Uh, hello, I'm DJ. I play in Kyle's game as Bran. Uh, you probably don't recognize me without my mask. Oh, he's got it. <laughs> yeah, of course I have it. Yeah. Always, it's always nearby. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I swear I will make a wisdom save eventually. <laughs> <laughs> you did that one time. Yeah, not to... Anyways. Uh, yeah, no, I've been playing for a long time, very long time. <laughs> uh, pretty diverse in RPGs in general, so not just stuck with D&D. I gotta, I have to school these guys and some of the other uh, other games out there. <laughs> Seriously, they're a little one tone, a little one note. I started I, I off with Rune, Qu- Rune Quest, Palladium, Rune Quest. Palladium, Palladium. I'm yeah. Other games, man. Blades of Dark. Blades. Oh, of the dark. I think I've heard of that one. Yes, that's the heist that one. I. Game. Yes, that's right. Flashback, flashbacks. Yes. Nice. Uh, uh, that's those guys. I'm Kyle. Obviously, I run the uh, the Thursday campaign, the consolation campaign, as I like to call it, because I didn't get any of the good players. <laughs> <who wanted. laughs> you did. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to make your life hell as a GM now. You, you, you thought I was asking for details before. Now I'm going to get all the fucking details. It's going to ask you about every little thing now. What type of makeup does that person wear? How do they smell? Oh, God, not the smell. <laughs> uh, Are we back to sewer sense? Going well, back to sewer sense. Button. I will send you that package. And if you ask what someone smells like, yeah, just open up putrid sewers. You get a good whiff. That's what they smell like. All right. Well, let's go ahead and talk about the Saturday game. Uh, David and I were in that into thin air, but uh, I don't feel like talking tonight because I'm the host. I get to listen. You Not my head to smile. <laughs> David, nice. why don't you tell us what happened? Yeah. Tell us what happened on, on that episode. Uh, <laughs> that episode in, in into thin air. Wow. Yeah, that was quite the episode. <laughs> It opens up with, uh, yeah, our intrepid adventurers relaxing on, as Frank put it, Lake Tahoe, (laughs) when suddenly there is just sheets of water just coming down, and then as we go outside, no longer water, it is fishes. (laughs) We go to investigate. We think it's a water spout that's out front. Turns out to be a big, giant gin. So the gin is looking for something, apparently, searching the lake, moving the waters as, you know, biblical times. And um, yeah, so we decide to engage the, the gin and that didn't end well. But I can give you, I'll give you the list of characters that we had. We had- Wait a minute, Wit. did you say had? 
this in past tense, but not there yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah, one didn't make it back. <laughs> We'll explain that later. We'll explain that in, in a minute. There was Babs no, no, the Bug. You have to watch the episode for that. Yeah, you got to watch that. Uh, Babs the Bug there, Bibwit, the Rabbit Folk. We have Boobo, the Owl, <laughs> and whatever Carol was playing. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. She didn't choose a B name. She no, she didn't. She, yeah, she didn't make. She, did, she didn't go odd, so she's forgettable, she right? Didn't go to B band. No, she played a warlock, and yeah. unfortunately, the name fails me because she didn't pick a B, B name. So, <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna, tell, I'm, I'm gonna have to tell her to name a character Bambi or something. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, out of those characters, yeah, Babs the bug bag decides, <laughs> bug bear decides to give the gin a big hug. So we kind of augment her a little bit <laughs> and she goes to give the gin a hug. Next thing you know, boom, bright light flashes. And next thing you know, we're up in the clouds, <laughs> but we're all on different different clouds we are in the the uh plane of air oh they were high all right we were high yeah Yeah. (laughs) high as no i'm sorry uh anyway (laughs) sorry yeah we weren't actually a high as fuck so one of the things was we were all um split up so we had encounters with various things from air elementals to uh yeah avian beings and things like that uh so we had to try to find our way to get back down but before we could do that we also had to find out who was it that that put us <laughs> up here in the air of plane uh plane of air i want to say airplane there uh anyway so uh yeah so navigating the plane of air i don't know if anybody has you know our viewers have seen it it's yeah you can't fly, the it's kind of difficult to get around. You pretty much I have, have no to bum idea a ride. What you're talking about. I thought it was great. It was great. You're that just flying one around. Singular aspect of it. <laughs> so yeah, so basically engaging with uh some of the wildlife, <laughs> uh some of the, the winged folk <laughs> and uh a couple of transmutation spells are the only ways that you can get get around uh also there are gnomes with trebuchets as my character found out to to get to the place where he needed to be so anyway after we get to our sources of info uh where who we can find out who it was that transported us there uh Eventually, we all end up at the same place. Turns out it was a gin named Point Dexter, who everybody said was, you know, a complete ass. So anyway, <laughs> we make our way to Point Dexter's uh, palace. And um, yeah, a member of our party was enraptured with, uh, uh, with Point Dexter. Point Dexter failed his dating throw, and he became interested in babs the bugbear <laughs> so and then we kind of yeah things along help with a uh, filter of love yeah and babs was our distraction while we searched the palace because we thought the blue gem was the key to us getting back home but it, it wasn't so you know i missed out on some really comic uh, comedic gold with uh, Top Gun references because uh, yeah, I'll party. <laughs> One was already an owl. Two of us uh, polymorph into um, yeah, giant owls, and we're flying through these tunnel systems inside the palace. And yeah, we were in the danger zone. So, so I'm a little disappointed. Uh, next time, if you ever do an air game, there has to be like a lot of references to movies that have like air in it or like oh, yeah. air the title like air bud have like a dog that's doing sports or something like that sky oh, high gosh, there was so yeah. much references in that game though. oh yeah sky high would have been a great one for oh, references sky, yeah. yeah but so. what you had uh, uh racers on the rainbow road mm-hmm. yeah the rainbow uh, bridge yeah yeah gosh, so i'm trying to think well it kind of, the episode culminates with uh yeah <laughs> Babs the Bugbear and Point Dexter becoming, I don't know, I'm trying to be, I don't know, appropriate. A horizontal about this. Tango. tango. Yeah, there we go. A whirlwind yeah. of flurious emotions. 
Yes. Yeah, a fur <laughs> and air. So, <laughs> yeah, it. Uh, it was like watching a hair dryer gone wild. <laughs> there, there's probably now some thematic bugbear porn out on the internet now. So, <laughs> just be forewarned. Let's be honest, there was before too. There, but... Yeah, there probably was. So, uh, anyway, after we find our way home, which turned out to be uh, a vortex to get us back, uh, we were both. We were, all three of us were kind of in a quandary of. You know, how do we get home? How do we interrupt Babs to, you know, to get her back home? But do you want to interrupt Babs? None of us wanted us to interrupt Babs. We felt she was better off because, I mean, one of the things that we discovered about Babs is she had been looking for love. Well, she found it. I so, figured you'd have to take like some kind of mental damage and seeing that and not being able to get that did. injury out we of your did. mind. We had, we had yep. to do constitution checks. <laughs> There's <laughs> just some things that prestidigitation won't clean off. Nope. Nope. And uh, yeah, so we thought that Babs was for the better of it. You know, would be more happy there with her boyfriend, Point Dexter. <laughs> if we just took the vortex back home. <laughs> And that's how that episode ended, folks. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Really weird. And uh, yeah, I mean, I had some friends that watched it and they just could not believe some of the crap we were up to. So, so well, there were so it. many pop culture references there littered were. throughout it, too. There were. There were. So, hey, you had a talking owl and a talking rabbit. What more can you can you ask for? You know, and a bugbear. Yeah. So. Hot cartoon named Jessica. That's my other character on Cacophony. So we'll we'll get to that <laughs> conversation someday. <laughs> All right, that was a Saturday show. Uh, Frank, oh, for the first time, we have someone who is actually participating in the Margu campaign yeah. here to talk to us about the Margu campaign. Well, I was hoping one of you could describe what happened because it was all uh, just a blur of great. silver. <laughs> Well, it was a Sunday campaign with uh, three <laughs> generations of Franks. They're all related. <laughs> the entire then, cast is all related. And I think what? Uh, the Robert of Zeppelin was in danger of being dissected by the Sisters of the Moon? I, well, you know, I thought it was going to be more like a circumcision. They were just working a little high for my taste. <laughs> but uh so i mean we kicked it back off after apparently because i was missing I, I didn't realize that i was warped away and into the castle or the apothecary or what, what, no, what was it uh the uh abbey susan abbey okay. the abbey of doom and it literally just surrounded by all these evil blasted effing nuns that i will never forgive and like and I think I'll go on a mission to hunt nuns from here on out, as long as they're lower got a lower level. Like got a like little, little Silent Hill thing going on there. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I just went with the Cali Ma. I imagine they were trying to rip your heart out. But uh, okay. They were, I don't know what the hell they were doing. All I know is it hurt bad, and it came close to death many a times. <laughs> and not just by the nuns. My own. That's just it. When you run with the Sunday crowd, don't worry about the enemy. Worry about the man standing next to you, because that's how you're going to die in this game. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so, my own flesh and blood. Well, that's almost everybody. But my own son. <laughs> Apparently, after getting worked away, they asked, Dude, would you like to head back? And my son says, yes, if you would, please. Not not don't kill him. Just, yeah, I want the head back. He, he is straight from my loins. I can tell with that, you know. But uh, what I remember, we... We, they all finally started traveling that way, and literally the whole campaign for that day was spent there at this uh, abbey. Me being messed with and mind f by all these freaking nuns. Are we PG-13, or are we – if I drop the F-bomb, we're, we're full mature. mature. We're oh, mature. Fucking A. He was killing me last week that we went PG-13. Uh, <laughs> but uh, – so the whole time I sat there. But I would have to say, my son was ready to break in and try to rescue me. I don't think it was so much he wanted to rescue me. I think he had it out to try to get that big-ass sword that after I cast a little magic on the, I guess it'd be head nun, uh, didn't like the uh, 
spell like to spell the pain to what happened so she was gonna circumcise me or cut off one of the heads and i think that's what frankie was actually going for he was going in to do that but i thought i was a goner the whole time while they all sat out there and had discussions and played played with their damn zonkies and it, it was a nightmare and literally the whole game was i think we spent about an hour and 30 minutes all in that one little spot because well, everybody has their conversations. Uh, towards the end, though, it finally got around. I, I thought I was a dead man for sure. But then uh, finally got around. They struck a deal to save my life, which was my dad. My dad came to the rescue. Just uh, I think he was trying to get the game rolling again because we stall out quite easy. Uh, so we'd have to do a mission for the nuns to go get. I Honestly, I'm trying to remember. I, I believe it was a gym is what they were requesting for. I don't Maybe remember. Like, like I said, I, I played it. I kept going to get coffee because I was locked in a uh, silver case. No, I was strapped down by silver chains at this point. So we played that one Jesus out. <laughs> yeah, you know, I I actually kind of enjoyed that. Other than you know, other than it was elves, you know, that could have got really kinky. I might have gone another way, but you know, silver nuns, elves, it turned me off more than turned me on. So they <laughs> struck the, the deal. <laughs> I thought that was in there. To be all honest with you, Kyle, I thought <laughs> there was one. When you play with Frank, you're getting a butt plug from somebody. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You're being Did a good hear you. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way to stop shit from flinging on you in one of the games. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. That's a little uh, bit more accurate. Uh, <laughs> so they finally struck the deal and when you play with the young the young just you hears something don't go out back <laughs> okay. uh, ask an elven nun at the beginning she knows it perfectly how to insert that <laughs> but uh, wow. as for the young as soon as we finally get released and they jab that was it a pendant I think he said this big ass pendant on my chest driving that to down uh, uh, the pain, the sear, literally, if one more roll, I had two hit points left. So that's why I started rolling up to uh, my secondary characters because <laughs> I thought I was a dead man. I didn't think there was any chance I was coming out of this a lot. But uh, I, I got through it. I'm a little uglier, but not as ugly as Man Fang. They released us. They touched us all to keep us from uh, motivated to go get this gym or whatever it was, except for uh, crap stain. But of course, I knew crap stain was not going to get away. But I'm going to run away. Yeah, you knew that wasn't going to happen. And then they say, "Don't run out back." And like any teenage boy, don't do that. Okay, I'll do it. So he runs directly out back and into the cemetery because you knew, knowing it's him, he was going out there to rob graves. Because that is just his character. He was going to go grave robbing. That's why I had no problem when I come out there and one idiot plus my son, the other idiot, are out there fighting a ghoul. I had no problem letting him uh, suffer a little bit. I had to suffer in this campaign. Somebody else is suffering. So that's why I just went, hey, hey how you guys doing? So they can get gnawed on a little bit. I thought that was fair. Uh, so we fought off a ghoul. They finally escape. I picked I picked a little bit of pocket. I put my shitty drawers on Crapstain's face. So that way, he is now a true Crapstain. You got to live up to the name. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, from there, we, we started our way out. That's the last thing I remember. It's been kind of a blur of a week this week. I'm sure. <laughs> it sounds like. But uh, I was ready. I two campaign. characters. Two characters. <laughs> and I had my death cleric already. I was ready to cause death. Man, they were just torturing you, man, because, I mean, okay, an order of nuns is not going to have the remove curse spell. It's like, Jesus. I think I pissed them off far enough to where they didn't want to remove it at this point. They're just, <laughs> we're going to kill him. I, I think it was Frank. I think it's Frank's plan from the beginning. Awesome. He, it probably was. He was wanting to kill yeah. somebody, and I just happened to fall in just the right point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's articles out there saying, why as a GM, you should kill a player every day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every once in a while, you need to kill one. <laughs> well, he's made threats to kill Manfang several times. So instead of Manfang, he starts beating on me. <laughs> nice. Oh, Guys, man. if you're wondering where Murder Hobo Inc. started, 
the Margu campaign is a guys. great idea of how that all happened. Oh yeah, and they will be available to watch this coming Sunday at what time again, Frank? Uh, we are uh, four o'clock Eastern. Four o'clock mm-hmm. Eastern time. for the California crew out there who love to watch us. We're four o'clock Eastern. Smack middle of the day. No one cares about the Eastern. It's fine. Well, we play with a lot of old people, you know. By the time eight o'clock rolls around, we're usually ready for bed. I drink. I mean, coffee it's, just the first it's Sunday. It's Sunday. Just start day drinking and watch it. Then you're good. Yeah, exactly. Go to church, get blessed, and then just dive into that good old Marco campaign, where evil is evil and nobody's left alive. <laughs> nice. I, I was just saying, I haven't been able to burn a village in a while. It's been like three or four Sundays since I burned something down. That's true. Has That's the true. law been there to stop you? No, I'm sure they're on our trail. He he has said there are people looking after we wiped out the last village. Oh. <laughs> I mean, did you guys wipe out the last village or was that, you know, you know like what? Since I'm not in game right now, hell I yeah, we count. wiped out that village. When we, you dive <laughs> down to rip off a of god. Anybody around to suffer for that? That was our fault. I don't care what those others say. <laughs> I'll own up to it. I'm proud of it. Like I said, leave no witness. <laughs> the mob has taught us well. No witnesses. Nice. All <laughs> right. And with that, let's go ahead on to the separate second topic tonight uh the law and how you use that or interact <laughs> with that uh in your campaign. Uh and so Man, I don't even have an idea of what to ask for you guys. What do you guys prefer? How about this? What do you guys prefer as players in a campaign? Do you like having the rule set right there where there's someone right around the corner to beat you over the head if you knock over that granny and it's robber and then run her <laughs> over with a horse or a goat or or a slime or something? Wait, are we uh, are we playing Red Dead Redemption or something? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Whatever you need to do to get the job done. But do you guys prefer playing uh, uh, with uh, strict laws in place, or do you like Wild West themes? And let's start with David on this question. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like a little law and order in my game. So, dun, dun. and you play with me. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah, I'm not the DM though. <laughs> <laughs> But no, no, I think that there should be consequences. Are you going to get a whole bunch of murder hobos on you and on your game? So, or elven nuns, or elven nuns. Yeah, I mean, they'll put the strict law in order on you. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, they have. Oh yeah. Plus three rulers of smiting or something. (laughs) So we'll have you singing doe a deer in three seconds flat, buddy. Yeah. So if you go into uh, a town or a city or something like that, of course you're going to have laws that you have to obey. I mean, some of them will even be posted out by the gate as you're coming in. So, so yeah, I mean, I think there should be consequences to, to actions sometimes when you're in a civilized setting. So that's I agree. Unless they're halflings. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You just walk all over them. Come on. <laughs> Go bowling. <laughs> all right, DJ, what are your thoughts? As a player in a game, do you like the law to be around heavily enforced or non-existent? I am for the law as a player and as a GM, actually. Uh, I also am for law being used in good ways and evil ways. Uh, I love exploring it all because I love causing... I love having the consequences for those that like to go a little crazy and I love uh, throwing it out when I'm GMing games too. Um, I also like using it to manipulate things in your favor. Uh, I have successfully done that. Elaborate on this one. I'm curious. (laughs) (laughs) I have successfully um, done that with an evil character, mind you. Um, in a game where I was playing an evil wizard, um, happened across a um, accountant that apparently was an accountant for a mob, uh, was able to charm him into divulging that 
was able to decipher his account books, uh, then poses him to utilize it to gain the money of the mob and then set him up for a fall and get them all arrested by the local law in the city and then seize all the assets (laughs) legally. Nice. Bastard. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think we know which way you're leaning, Frank, but just to ask the question again, do you like the law in place when you play a game or when do you run games or no? No. No. So when you play I, I tried game, that one time and after that one time said no way in hell ever. This is why this is why he's in the opposite favor of it. <laughs> I'm 100% for the law so I can break it. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I like I do like a balance. I mean, I don't want I want to be able to do some cuz this is my way to get rid of all the evil that builds up inside of me and push that devil out of me on Sunday through. Oh, Frank the Kane. FBI is now watching. The FBI is now paying <laughs> attention. <laughs> but uh, you know, so but I do want there to be consequences. I mean, I don't want a game where I can just go up and slaughter who. Well, we do do that, but there can be consequences. But you know, I I, I want there to be like this in the the current campaign in the last Kathleen Village. I started going reckless, and who did we have? Mr. Rodrigo out there to pounce on us. So there was somewhat some sort of a, 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 an authority there. Is it heavily authoritized? No. I didn't want that because I, I like the way it feels like it's it's out there. It's coastal. There's enough you know, bad things happening, so you can still get away. Not full Wild West, but we're almost a territory-type law. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Sure. Mm-hmm. No. We're a territory. We're looking towards statehood, but screw you. I can still kill you. But, you know, Ah, there would be consequences. The only thing is, is the proper way is leave no prisoners, no survivors, no witnesses. Wow. (laughs) This is a game of Red Dead Redemption. It is. Funny enough, I'm playing that part two. (laughs) Maybe that's why I am the way I am. (laughs) Oh boy. That little lady won't get out of my way. Run her over with the wagon. We'll deal with it later. <laughs> yeah. Pay off. Ah, your shit, there's someone down the street who saw it. Gotta get them. Gotta get them. I, and then you're having to kill the next person, then the next person. Leave no witnesses. See? <laughs> there was a kid who saw us. There we go. <laughs> what do you think, Frankie? Leave witnesses or no witnesses? No witnesses. You've taught me well. See? Little Frankie says it the same. There you go. Respect, <laughs> respect my authority. <laughs> Got right. 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 Who do you think got me playing Red Redemption with him? <laughs> I said it was fun, and then I killed somebody. And was like, Maybe I'll take a look. Mm. Well, what about structures? Uh, uh, I mean, like as far as like the makeup of what makes up the who makes the laws or whatever. I mean, I was say yeah, because we also run into that issue with uh, uh, the law where your players are going to be level one to level five in a day or two. And suddenly that little sheriff doesn't mean jack shit. <laughs> Just push him off. You stop that, mister. Boop. Fireball. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And so the question is, uh, one, how do you uh, keep up with your players as they do that? How do you make it still the law actually mean anything when your players are bending space and reality and uh, uh david you were kind of going on to that mm, not really but we'll start with you first. <laughs> well like uh, like you mentioned i mean it depends on what level you're dealing with with your yeah. players i mean if you're you're dealing with um you know players of uh, a higher level then you'd probably want your law in a higher setting or you know being being enforced by higher level NPCs, you know, where there could be real consequences and stuff like that. But, you know, if you're low level, it could be like, I was looking online and looking at some things uh, as far as like, um, just like background for how uh, different law structures were like back in uh, through medieval history. And two other things that I was looking at, was a uh, time traveler's guide to medieval England and uh, medieval underworld. Those are two two books that I was looking at, and basically, like one of the things that they start with 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 laws back in medieval Eng- England, like for small t- 
towns and things like that, you have what was called tithings. And it was just basically just, you know, elder members of your, your town, you know, that came up with the laws and enforced it, you know, until, you know, the town goes into like a Lord's, you know, servitude or something like that. And then the Lord makes up the laws and then appoints the officials to do it. So I would say if you're running, if you're running a campaign like that, you know, you may want to upscale your, your law enforcement as your characters progress. I mean, that's one thing I would do. <laughs> so, but uh, I still mean, have that today. It's called the Pennsylvania Dutch. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, I mean, we got different ways of law enforcement going, uh, you know, for our discussion tonight. But like on, on a you know, corporal level, that's that's pretty much it, you know. So just, you know, having, having the muscle to enforce, you know, the rule of law, basically. So, sure. you know. Um, I think also like uh, within D and D, the churches play a lot with the laws, you know, because um, not necessarily clergy, but paladins or nobility and stuff like that. And usually, paladins are used in enforce laws. Usually, and you know, their alliances, uh, their alignments are usually lawful good. And I think I've been in quite a few campaigns where paladins are used to try to keep a group. Uh, used as NPCs to try to maintain a group on a lawful path. So it's not so, well, mur hobo. Murder uh, hobo, you know, <laughs> just, a, just the name of our show. Watch yeah. gamers too. Watch <laughs> gamers too. Seriously. <laughs> nice. But so, uh, I, 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 that's, I, I've seen it before in some of the campaigns, like my brother's run and stuff, where it's just like, there's always that one person who's, a little bit stronger than anybody else in the party, but not too much to overwhelm taking on something down the road, but strong enough to where you can't just gang up and kill him just because you don't like the way he runs. And he just kind of maintains that purity of the law. That's why we don't have paladins with us. I thought about rolling up a paladin, but since I had to start first level, I knew I'd die within the first day. Yeah. I would think it would be hard the appropriate to... time to take care of a paladin. If he'd let me roll up a level ten paladin, I'd play it with the group. <laughs> well, I think with like murder hobo, our stand our standard is look if we're running a one shot as opposed to a campaign. It's just like it's hard to enforce laws in a one yeah. shot. You know, you start looking <laughs> at a clock at a clock ten minutes till the hour. It's just yeah, all laws go out the window because <laughs> somebody's trying to kill somebody by the end of it. I'm always trying to kill somebody. If I can't kill somebody during a, a game day, mm -hmm. feel a little let down. That's it's at least one thumb if I hadn't killed one person. Yeah, it's gonna be murder or larceny towards the end of the last <laughs> ten minutes. So that's probably why we're the way we are. But no, I think uh, I it, it, I've seen a lot of uh, DMs since I'm not professional there, where it seems like they uh, they do elevate their NPCs and people you're running into to help. Because uh, like, yeah, we get up level level five or six, it gets harder to control the group if you don't. And they'll always have like for us, it was uh, Rodrigo. He came in. He was tough. He was he was defeatable by a god, but he was tough enough that we weren't just going to walk right over him. So I think that's uh, one of the ways people try to help keep the law straight is by adding on that NPC that can kind of that you can elevate up above everybody else to get just a little bit of protection for the townsfolk. Not a lot, because I still burn some stuff, but yeah, yeah. I, I think GM he didn't have eyes everywhere. <laughs> no. <laughs> Rodrigo pops up everywhere because <laughs> he was uh, he There's was in our, in our last one shot too. So you guys had a Rodrigo. We had a Rodrigo. Oh yeah. So yeah, you have low level, and obviously you can start with like magistrates, and mm -hmm. then like you know deputies with the magistrate. Uh, add numbers to it. Once you start get to you know higher levels like three and four, maybe you're outside of the normal you know sheriff that you just push aside. But then you start having the concepts of like, oh, they need outside help. They send in, you know, somebody that works for the Lord, knights, uh, foot soldiers that actually are military. 
Or if we get really crazy, then they maybe hire mercenaries to come after ass. Mm-hmm. That's a fun one. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, then there are some more interesting aspects. So maybe you're past the level five where your average individual or human can't really do much about you. Well, that's when you get really fun. Uh, that's when you start getting outside of the norm, uh, usually either through um, divine services, like he was talking about the churches, or uh, other aspects. And you start going for more, come on, load up, load up. Where are you? There you are. Uh, <laughs> celestial creatures, you know, angels that are on the side of law, sending off. Uh, it's like, oh, this group is being a real jackass. Well, we're going to have, like, we're going to invoke our gods and laws of order that might respect him. It's like, these are a menace. They're, they're promoting chaos. We need, we need uh, more powerful entities to literally take them down. Or even, like, say, gold dragons, lawful creatures that don't want uh, individuals running around causing a bunch of problems in his territory, so to speak. There are many aspects, especially when you get into the higher stuff, sending a friggin' solar angel after your ass, shit like that. You can uh, get very interesting, or if you want to be you're really funny, frank ideas. Oh no 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 no! See, this frank, is not even Frank's good ideas yet. Notes. <laughs> yeah, this isn't even the good ideas. The good ideas is like no no no. You really want to be a jackass. You really want somebody to hound your ass. You start invoking like the devils and Asmodeus. Oh, oh is <laughs> then, then it's few? like oh, we'll deal with them really fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just one solar. It's like. Oh, we got like a couple, uh, we got a couple bearded devils after your ass. We got some uh, other entities, you know, war machines or freaking uh, pit fiend coming after you. Yeah, no, it's all good. Or hell, just send them straight to straight to hell and just let them have uh, fun in the whole tangent of it all. <laughs> Ooh, that could be fun. Oh, yeah. See, again, there it's, it's there's that there's that mortal level. There's that mortal level, which you can escalate pretty easily by just pumping up their CRs and whatnot. But then you can just really go outside the box like, oh, I'm sorry. Did you not expect the angel coming after your ass? <laughs> Shouldn't have burned down the church. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, did you burn down an orphanage that was being funded by the church? I'm sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, there's another different direction. I mean, we're talking law, but it doesn't have to be a law. It could be a code, too. And you decide to rob old granny Vincenzo. And now you have a forever. thieves guild coming after you. And they're not coming with you at the law. They're coming at you with a knife in your back while you're sleeping. And so, I mean, it's not really a law. It's more of a code. And how does that interact with uh, you guys as players and dealing with thieves guilds and that sort of thing? Did you like right. that segue there? Mm-hmm. I did. I like how you <laughs> did that. So I've actually incorporated in one of my home campaigns, uh, literally a mafia, mm-hmm. uh, and which the group has already encountered once. Um. So, yeah, it's one of those things where it can get really sketchy because then it's like, oh, well, they're not going to follow the same stuff. They might come at you from really odd angles. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, you did something bad. We're not coming after you. We're coming after your family if you haven't. Or your friends or loved ones or your property. Chickens. (laughs) Okay, you got me at property. Family, loved ones, friends. (laughs) Ah, Who the hell cares? You're like, "Eh, whatever. (laughs) Wait, did you just just attack my citadel? What? (laughs) (laughs) That's mine. And if you really want to be a dick about it, you do it by, again, the, through the legal ways. It's like, oh, um, we're actually going to seize your lands, or we're going to smear your good name, or bad name, whichever you want. That's <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, like you mentioned, thieves' skills and stuff like that, I mean, that they're they can be part of, like, a nobleman's or a lord's toolbox, you know, it's just like, Okay, they don't want to get their hands dirty, you know, employ the local thieves guild or the assassin guild or something like that and start issuing sanctions and stuff, you know. Contracted hitmen. (laughs) Exactly. I kind of figured that's coming. Sooner or later, we've pissed off enough people that they'll start surfacing at some point. I'm ready for that. I'm excited for that. Mike, kill me. Frank, do not be afraid to just use teleportation like like, literally right in front of them. (laughs) (laughs) Didn't you just teleport in the cage? I did. Like Teleport in, assassin just stabs him, leaves. Leaves. (laughs) Well, like uh, in Cacophony, I mean, even somebody innocent could uh, have a sanction against him. I mean, uh, look at Cacophony when Mortimer J. Sneed came in. Uh, You know, he had the 
the Sisters of Pain actually after them, you know, the assassins. And yeah, that, that became one of our episodes where we had to deal with that. Pretty sure no one on that game is really, you know, innocent. Mm-mm. Guilty of something. Confidence? Guilty of something. No, they're Guilty all of something. We're, we're wholesome. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> what was that about a cat lady and a statue? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Eunice the Monk Slayer. Yeah. <laughs> and that that came from that too, was uh, protecting Mortimer. So <laughs> Eunice was used as a weapon. So <laughs> old lady with a cane. So. Were you guys actually even really necessary with Mortimer J. Sneed though? You know, he's on a sabbatical from... <laughs> yeah from the grand academy (laughs) from the grand academy but i mean he's from the grand academy he time travels all the time yeah he didn't need you guys to actually stop the law he's magnificent and powerful what's really going to stop a magic user from bending all of reality i said "Eh, you got your angels and your devils but a really good wizard is ready for that so really What's stopping the magic people from doing whatever they want? Who said Mortimer was uh, a their magic good user. wizard? <laughs> uh, you know, he might be a capable uh, magic user. It doesn't mean that he's really good at it because for some reason, I mean, his power seems to run into something finite. You know, like for time travel, he needed a device. You know, so if the device breaks, then, you know, so, so there was always some kind of you know, uh, built in uh, obsolescence to something that Mortimer did or something. So, well, now that's just the DM, you know, making sure that their NPC isn't too powerful. Yeah. Yeah. The DM's not going to be able to do that with the PC. So, how are they uh, getting police, the magic users, the wizards? And before I end that question, I'm going to step out and I'm going to let you guys discuss that and then <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> he's got to do dad so. oh, yeah. starting with Dev. Uh, david you take it from here <laughs> uh well i mean to, i think to keep things in check i mean you know i mean you always got to have uh an npc that that has a leg up somehow you know whether it be uh their magical ability or something like that i mean to keep things in check i mean one of the things that they can do like say for example you deal with somebody with uh divine magics they can come in they can curse the party you know curse them curse their weapons or whatever they get out of line you know they'll never get the curses off or anything like that you know right so- <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. A good nun can remove any curse with the right amount of pain. You yeah. would think if they're motivated enough. <laughs> <You know, laughs> they're, they're rulers. rulers you know, over now, because of GJ, I got to think Frank was screwing me because, you know, these, he, according to him, these nuns should have been able to remove that simple curse without killing me. Mm-hmm. They should have. <laughs> <laughs> so they that helped wait. me. There was no chance I was supposed to survive that. They didn't want to remove it. They just like to kill. Right. See, and that fits in with the rest of the game. So we, this is all, our death rampaging and everything is led by the DM. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so DJ, I mean, how how would you do it? How would you use magic to control your players and stuff like that? So with, if like a wizard's getting out of hand or something, or like enforcing law against magic users, since you know magic users tend to have a lot of. Um, Ability to either get away or even control the way things look or mm-hmm. outcome. I know in um, Dragon Lance is probably my best example for this is they have the uh, they have like the organization of wizards. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not just like a council like you see in some other games where you have like a handful of powerful wizards. It's more like a full structure. Uh, like all wizardry is kind of schooled at the beginning, mm-hmm. uh, unless it's uh, some taught outside of it. And they generally test people at the beginning uh, that can act, it's actually a life-threatening test to try to prove that they can use magic well and potentially even responsibly. Uh, if they get out of line, they have to answer then to the whole wizard community, not just to a handful of uh, individuals that, you know, maybe self-proclaim, you know, uh, keepers of the law or something. They have to answer to the whole community um, in, in all its various orders. Um, in that they even have specialized individuals that hunt down other rogue mages or mm. magic users. And well, having to that, then how 
how do they know? Because you guys know? are way more versed at all mm-hmm. this than I am. It, it, it how depends, would they know obviously. that that person is, you know, going a son? Well, like probably most instances in any type of game like that, they probably ended up finding out by somebody informing them uh, through the grapevine, you know, oh, we saw this wizard doing something. Oh, we have message that, you know, this uh, group destroyed a city or burned down an orphanage (laughs) because there was a survivor because you didn't get them all type stuff. And there's ways to investigate it too. Oh, yes. uh, From afar, you know, I mean, any divination uh, like clairvoyance or something like that, you know, they can actually focus into your group and see what's yeah. going on. So. There's also very, yeah, again, there's also various magics that could probably tell them, and the GM could always make some stuff up with that. Who That's knows? how I usually learn the GM. Uh, there's also true. the fact of like, oh, we're going to contact a outer being that can potentially give us an answer of like, oh, somebody burned down this whole town. Well, we don't have any witnesses. How do we know who did it? Oh, well, let's contact a divine entity that probably knew it. They can give us the answer, and then we can go from there. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there's again it's Please. it, yeah there are many ways especially with magic and if something doesn't fit you don't like it you can always create something too uh, mm-hmm. I mean I don't know how many home, I don't know how many homebrew spells I've seen on D&D Beyond from various people it's yeah. uh, quite a large quantity yeah. um, but yeah. yeah when it comes to magic users and I think magic users in particular are one of the biggest uh, categories as they're prone to be able to manipulate uh, to manipulate individuals into doing something. I can remember uh, one of the Dragonlance novels has a rogue wizard that ends up posing as a god for this whole town. So basically, the uh, t- uh, the wizards at the tower send enforcers after. Him. Unfortunately, he was just a little too powerful for that. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it's one of those things where I think. Especially magic users can really abuse laws and whatnot. I mean, I know I did when I was playing my evil character. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the, one of the things that gets me is that, you know, like for, for example, I mean, you can have, I mean, we have a particular class for it. We have witch hunters instead of monsters and stuff like that. Their, their goal could be is to, to hunt outlaw or, you know, uh, rogue mages and things like that. You know, that's something that you is that kind of what like the blood hunter is, is kind of, I mean, um, is, yeah. Is blood hunter, I think is like, they mostly focus on like one type of monster that they go after. How it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. I believe, uh, I know in Pathfinder, they have the inquisitor and their archetypes that, go very in line with uh, focusing on uh, dealing with law. In fact, Pathfinder also has a Hell Knight, the Hell Knights. They are basically, we kill everything that is chaos-based. We Uh enforce law everywhere, whether you want it or not. I love (laughs) them. They're so fun. (laughs) See that, we had a, there was a, uh, when I played RuneQuest a lot, there was a a class for that, well, I guess it'd be the way it calls, uh, Storm bowls mm-hmm. hated anything chaos. I mean, if you, and they could sense or smell anything chaotic, and if they they were like a wild paladin, I guess you could say, if they could, if you were chaotic and you were near within a certain range, and they could sense you or smell you, they would have that by their god, they had to attack and try to kill you. It was their law to destroy all things chaotic evil, and that's what that reminds me of. Actually, that's another point of what happens when law versus law conflict. You have individuals that have their law where they have to go kill somebody, but say they're in a town, like a civilized town, where murder is uh, against the law. Then you have a conflicting aspect of law. Yeah. So that's also another interesting case where you have law versus law. What is the one law's thought on chloroform? And does this rag smell funny to you? Mm, yeah, yeah. Does this smell like chloroform to you? <laughs> oh, worst pickup line ever. Does this rag smell funny? <laughs> smell this. No, no, deep whiff. Deep whiff. <laughs> You're not getting a good one. <laughs> Just keep going. Just keep keep smelling. Um, yeah, I've I've always actually loved when it's law versus law because then you also have the ethical debates that go along with it. It's you know, well, how strict or how flexible should you be in law should it be by the word or should it be more you know case by case basis now 
obviously gets really deep and I don't think most people want to deal with that in a game. What? They want to no. get out of that type of aspect. Oh. But I've, I've, <laughs> I've had some law interesting cases. Law, and you, as not like uh, a magistrate law, but just like your deity's law that you have to attack and, you know, kill. If you're breaking the law and that by murdering somebody that is, you know, chaotic or evil, because that's what you're supposed to do. And you do that in a town where murder is illegal, then you broke the law. Will that actually make you want to commit suicide? Because you are now. Uh, I think that depends more on the case by case basis. Yeah. (laughs) Like I've always pictured lawful as it doesn't mean that you um, always follow the strict law. Actually, another great example that I just watched because I've been rewatching it is uh, Hercules, the legendary journeys. I think it was the opener of like season three where he's transporting a criminal that killed somebody uh, back to Sparta and they go through the whole thing. But at the end he brings them there. And of course, throughout the survival journey that it was, he learns about the individual, you know, he has a family, you know, yes, he committed the crime, but it was more like, you know, Oh, I started doing this because it was the best thing I could learn to do at the time. Anyways, it's, he gets up to trial and you see this part and just looks at him. It's like, it's the judge. It's like, and okay, he killed that guy. Okay, guilty, and moves on. It's like that wasn't a fair trial. It's like, don't you believe in law? And Hercules' comment in the show was, "I believe in justice." So at the end, it's somebody frees him with an arrow, snaps the rope that he's being hung with, causes the distraction, allows him to get out. So it's one of those things of just because you're lawful and you believe in law doesn't mean that you have to abide yes. by every law. Sometimes it's this law is not just. And that's why I like sometimes using law as an evil aspect. Like, oh, I have a tier, I have a tyrannical dictator in this city, rules with an iron fist, you know, uh, punishes uh, grievous uh, sentences upon people for the most minor acts. Like, oh, they spoke out against, uh, against your uh, newest decree. Well, imprison them for a decade. Is that breaking the law or is it serving justice when the party helps the people? So it, 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 law doesn't always mean straight law. It can also be just around the ethics of justice. And that's, that's just why they got okay, rid of kill the everybody. We'll talk system. about it later. <laughs> <laughs> Murder everybody. We'll sort out the we'll sort out the souls after. Uh, okay. uh, our you know what? You're right. That guy was innocent. <laughs> <laughs> Magic and morality. Next. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that just gets into so many fun things. And, 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 if you want to go magic and morality, anytime you cast charm purses is is immoral. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, you're forcing somebody to believe something else. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're doing it for the good of everything. No, no for some mili- people, that's the only way they can get mili- the women to say, "Yeah, you're handsome." Well, it sounds like, oh, you are stopping these goblins by charming them or something. <laughs> technically, um, that's, te- that's technically uh, immoral. And Making I them something against their will. Bad. Oh, necromancy is <laughs> great. It's like, oh, I miss somebody. I'm going to raise my brother up. They want to protect me. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. We're going to go around here with final thoughts and a final question. Uh, while you, I'm going about spouting all the crap that's coming out of my mouth, I want you guys to think of a ridiculous, not necessarily ridiculous, but a law that a town that you might walk into would have, like, don't ride a giraffe down Main Street. Come up with something like that. But guys, this is the end of the show of the Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, Between the Rolls. Uh, you can find us on Twitch. You can find us on Twitter. You can follow us over on our Discord channel, talk about D&D and about other things like that. Uh, if you want to join in on the fun, not this week. This week we have Thursday cred campaign. Cthulhu <laughs> rises, everybody dies. I'm going to do terrible, awful people. Terrible, awful. I'm going to do terrible, <laughs> awful people to my things. Wow. Wow. I think like that's the right for Cthulhu game, actually. I think that statement's right. That's, that's probably right. But right. you knew after those backgrounds you were showing, that, that line kind of makes sense. Oh, yeah. (laughs) You should have seen what I did last Thursday. Uh, (laughs) Followed by the Saturday campaign, the Calamity campaign, the Bronze Age. Mm -hmm. David and all of them are going to have a grand old time. And then finally, 
figure out what's happening with those Margu guys, Frank and all of them. Clearly, they are the murder hoboiest of them all. I'm pretty and sure they're going to burn down a town. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't burn down something, I'm just going to lose it. Uh, and uh, before I forget, there is Who's Your Con? Who's Your Con? Uh, uh, Friday, fine. take a look at that. Uh, do whatever needs to be done there. Register. I don't think it's in person. I think it's online. But this is the first time I'm actually hearing about it. Thanks, Frank. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, but if you don't want to uh, ever watch any of these streams, you can follow us on the podcast. If you want to buy some cool D&D ship, you can go to our website. Once again, let's thank our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice, uh, for making those wonderful dice that always seem to roll 20s when Frank is rolling them. Uh you have to know the maker, unfortunately. He gets these special special dice. Special uh, weighted and... dice. <laughs> There's something. I know that. There's something. <laughs> they just have or, who's them. your oh, daddy no, dice? Moves them over real fast. Just a <laughs> bunch of twenties actually listed on it. Exactly. He he only shows you the twenties, you know, but I think what he's not showing is he, you don't see all the other twenties on that one dice. I was exactly. about to say <laughs> And when you think your DM is making up a stink, why don't you get yourself some adventure sense? Avoid putrid sewers, but the library is great, the tavern's great, and if you're looking to write a book, pick up the Shine Project. They ask a lot of the important questions, make you think about things. All right, guys, we're going around the table with a final thought and a ridiculous law. David, I've put you on the spot so many times tonight, so I'm going to do DJ first. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, I already have one. Uh, so a ridiculous law would be, do not hurt the ducks. Or you get tarred and feather and must go around the town quacking like a duck. I want to ask why, but this is a final thought, and I don't think I'm allowed to. <laughs> All right, David, next. Uh, yeah, I would probably say on Sundays there's a silly hat mandate. You got to wear a silly hat <laughs> on the days of whatever would be the equivalent to a, a Sunday in uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So that's really awesome for church. I think. I think oh yeah. So yeah. Obviously, that's the reason. The why bigger, I the bigger the hat, the better. So. Actually, I'm pretty sure this is actually a law in Britain, like a real Probably. one. That's what, <laughs> yeah, what no. inspired it. It was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. It's the and mandate. Finally, Frank, what do you got for us? Man, I'm really just digging out the thong law. You now you have thong. to wear thong. <laughs> bars did you use that one in, huh? and <laughs> There's a law, and I, I think the law is literally just tiled you have to cut your uh, pairs before you serve <laughs> <laughs> oh my god we just went down here. all <laughs> right everybody that's between the rolls for you tonight we'll see you on thursday everybody wave to the camera good night good night everybody